We thought she had the flu. She progressively got worse. She started to get double vision and she had been vomiting. Um, she wound up having what we believed is a seizure. Took her to the hospital. Um, when we got her there, she was non-responsive. And at the time, she could not walk. She couldn't talk. She couldn't eat. Um, she could not do anything. She was incontinent. There were periods she was catatonic. She would just stare. So she's had to learn how to do everything all over again. She's come a really long way, and I'm grateful for where we are. We are still trying to navigate this HE world with Emma. Emma's symptoms began over three years ago. Before HE, Emma was this happy, friendly, loving, life of the party little girl, and then one day it was like a switch went off, and she was gone. She stopped communicating, interacting, thinking. She just disappeared, and we were left with her shell. It began with hallucinations, bouts of hysteria. She could no longer read or remember how to write her name. It became nearly impossible to take her out in public places. Close friends and family, teachers, therapists, all started asking, what happened at her? It was devastating to us. Her siblings, we just all watched as she disappeared with no answers. Our world now consists of doctors, specialists, medication, much of which is trial and error. This is Emma today. I woke up on April 7th a different person. I was a very active and healthy person. Now I was having daily panic attacks, stroke-like symptoms happening to my face, irrational phobias that I could never explain, moments of OCD, muscle spasms or tics, memory loss, several times forgetting who my family members were. Complete lack of concentration and focus, blacking out hallucinations, and sometimes I would go into these two-year-old phases. This resulted in a lot of doctor visits, ER visits, and a lot of tests. Because my CT scan and EEG came back with normal results, every psychologist, doctor, clinic nurse, or professional I saw had no clue what I was suffering. They all had a different diagnosis from each other and all they could do was give me these different medications that might suppress my symptoms. Hi, I'm Carson Reynolds and I'm 14. I was diagnosed with autoimmune encephalitis. I've lost friends and not been able to play sports. I've suffered from stroke-like symptoms and seizures. I'm still fighting this disease. I was getting more sick and my symptoms became more dangerous and severe. Immediately my neurologist sent me to the ER to go get a PET scan done. We immediately started my oral steroids after my steroids ended. All of my symptoms came back. My neurologist told us about a treatment called an IVIG. Four weeks later after this treatment I immediately felt like myself again and I was back to the person that I was. My family and I are so much closer going through this little rough bump in life. Truly the only reason I'm here today is my family and I's faith in God and that God gave me strength and I'm here today. But the medical field really needs to research this. Neurologists, uh, rheumatologists, you know, these people really need to um, delve into the world of autoimmune encephalopathy or autoimmune encephalitis because there are so many people that have this and go on for years having it and not knowing it really falls back on research and you know really studying and and just being knowledgeable about what this is and that is our medical field our medical field is what's going to help a lot of people that are out there um, and a lot of people that are suffering with it now